Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this glorious sunrise safari. Starting off our day with the spectacular elephant bull, and he is absolutely gorgeous. What a way to start the day. An elephant in the sunrise underneath the beautiful marulas. Quite spectacular. And a very warm welcome to all of you to our sunrise safari. For those of you joining us for the first time, my name is Jamie. I have Andrew on camera with me this morning. Brent will be out on Rusty with Brian. And we have all kinds of exciting things on the cards for all of you. Don't forget we are coming to you live from Juma and Arethusa Game Reserves within the Sabi Sands in the Greater Kruger National Park of South Africa. And not only are we live, but we're also interactive. So if you have questions that you'd like to send through or comments that you'd like to make, you can do that on hashtag Safari Live on Twitter, or you can email through to questions at wildearth.tv. And what a stunning morning it is proving to be. This lovely elephant bull. I think it's the same one that we've seen a couple of times on Juma recently. He is sort of in must. I'm not sure if he's going into his must cycle or coming out of it. He hasn't quite got to the stage of urine dribbling, but he's definitely secreting from his temporal glands. But a completely peaceful scene. He's completely ignoring us. Every now and again, he looks back at us and then carries on with his morning breakfast. Crunch goes the sickle bush. Just watch the dexterity of that trunk. And he's probably, look at that hole in his ear. We'll always know which elephant this is. Perfect identifying feature. Is he gonna reach up? Yes, he is. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why he decided to headbutt that Marula bow. And it's still fascinating to watch. The only animal out here that can actually is capable of feeding higher than a giraffe is. An elephant standing on his back legs. And while we've been sitting waiting to start off our morning safari, he's done this a few times. And in fact, just before we went live, he crouched down on his knees, his back legs bending so that he could stretch his head right up. Unfortunately, even for this enormous gentleman, the marulas, the marula trees that he's standing under are just that little bit too tall. Oh, time for a scratch. They might not be the best for feeding, but it makes for a good rubbing post. And no matter who you are, or where you are in the world, there is nothing like that a tremendous sense of peace that an elephant bull just somehow gives off. Peace and wisdom. And he's not a young gentleman by any means. His temporal area is starting to sort of become indented. There you can see the glands secreting from just behind his eyes as he wanders forward. And that's what makes or led me to believe that he is in must, coming into or coming out of the must cycle. The doves are calling, the hardy dars are calling, the sun is giving the pinkish tinge to the sky. As our gentleman wanders off. So, plans for this morning. Hmm. Where should we begin? Yesterday, apparently, Steph had Karula and James had Tingana drinking around the Juma Dam Pan. For those of you who are unfamiliar with those names, there are two leopards, one female, one male. And I would love to know where they went last night. I know that Lucy in Indiana saw or heard hyenas calling, which is fairly standard. First thing in the morning, they're quite close to the den site. And that constant whoop that we woke, wake up to every morning is spectacular. Woo! Oh, look at him. He's fishing up. Sorry, let me duck down. 
beautiful. We also received a message first thing this morning that one of the viewers heard a leopard sawing on the Juma Dam camera last night. And I think that came from Star. Thank you for sending through your email and that update. Not quite sure what time it is. Oh, reaching up, those are just within his reach. Give it a good yank, there we go. Stripping the branch. See if we can reposition. I think he's gonna move down towards quarantine, actually. That wonderful open area. See if we can catch up with him. Yes, Brent and myself are planning a joint search for those, those two leopards. Let's figure out where they've gone. Let me just contact him on the Game Drive channel. I know he was trying to talk to me earlier. Jamie. Jamie, I'm right here. Both left between the Insulin and White. I'm headed to South. And then the drive is back. Copy that. Once I'm finished with the St. Lord, then I'll go check Weaver's Nest. Copy, I'll need to turn down for South. Copy. Brent and I are just planning our routes so that we don't check the same place twice. Apparently, yesterday they both... Oh, there we go. We can smell it nicely. Hello, boy. And the smell of a must elephant is very different from the normal elephant smell. Usually elephants give off this wonderful grassy scent. A warm mixture of elephant dung and the mammal smell is one of my favorite scents to start the day with. In this case, it carries an extra tinge of hormonal smell. I don't know how else to describe it. It's a very musky scent. Now, in theory, oh my word, look, it's all the Impala and Juma. <laughs> Absolutely enormous herd dashing away from the elephant bull. It's not unheard of for elephants to chase impala. Sometimes I think they do it just for the fun of it. And they've all woken up after a night spent on the open area of quarantine clearings. I'm nibbling away, having some breakfast. There's probably, this herd is enormous. There must be about 50 or more impala here. And in fact, one zebra, two zebras at the back there. <laughs> little ones picking their way after the adults. Is our zebra coming through? And a little foal. And some gentlemen having, starting off their morning with a sparring session. A couple of two year old males preparing for the rut. I want to reposition, but I actually think I'm just gonna wait, because I think there's a good chance they're gonna come out towards us into the open. No, not that way, almost, not that way. <laughs> there we go. Oh, one two-year-old, one three-year-old, by the looks of things, judging by the horn size. Definitely a mismatched battle there. And that gorgeous you. So easy to overlook Impala when you get used to seeing them. You forget just how graceful and dignified they really are. Those skinny limbs are immensely powerful. Yesterday we started off our morning with the wild dogs chasing Impala around Sydney's dam. That turned out to be the beginning of quite a frenetic morning with two wild dog packs meeting around Sydney's dam chasing each other around. We still don't know the actual outcome of that particular encounter. It seems as though it was a fairly unnecessarily peaceful, but an uneventful clash. Nobody seemed to have been injured. But apparently the last time that those two packs met, and this is something that I didn't discuss on yesterday morning's sunrise safari, but I discovered afterwards, the last time those two packs met, they 
actually killed. I, mean, I think it might have been the Investic Pack lost an adult member to the Sands Pack. <clears throat> Sorry, let me just get that message from Brent again. Sorry, Brent, what was the position of those tracks? Turn down spaghetti junction, heading south. Copy that, thank you. So Brent is already on male leopard tracks. Yes, little Impala, you picked a battle with a male that's far larger than you are. <laughs> the range of motion that these Impala can actually reach is stunning to watch. I'm just racing around full of the joys of the morning. Our zebra mother, joined by another member of the herd. Tails already swishing off the flies, despite the earliness of the hour. All accompanied to the wonderful soundtrack of that elephant bull that's still out of view at the moment but still we can hear him blowing dust over himself pulling down branches cracking trees the soundtrack of the bush before i start off my engine look at the sky and while we look at the sky and listen to the sound of the elephant bull cracking the branches. Autumn, who is watching on YouTube, Autumn would like to know how big can an elephant bull get? And this particular gentleman is large, but not by far the largest elephant I've ever seen. So Autumn, we're looking at about six tons. So 6,000 kilograms, that's about roughly 12,000, 12 and a half thousand pounds. Where's he gone? I can hear him. I can't see him, however, I can see the sun poking its head over the horizon. I'm going to stop when I've got a nice clear view of it. Autumn, a good five to six meters at the shoulder. No, sorry. I'm talking, I'm being very silly. Not five to six meters at the shoulder, five to six meters that they can reach up to with their trunks. Probably, I would say, you know, four to five meters at the shoulder would be a good height estimate, which is about right up to close to 15 feet in height. And you don't realize just how big an elephant bull really is until you are next to him, or in fact, have a comparison of him standing, for example, next to a house or a car. Look at that. Looks like something out of a movie or a film. Breathtaking sunrise. But that sunrise is a reminder that we have things to find. We can't linger too long. We need to go and locate those leopards. I'm going to go and help Brent. He apparently has found tracks wandering south down Twin Dams. There's our wonderful elephant bull. And Autumn, if I were to estimate how big this Ellie bull is, I would say that he is at least twice my height. I'm about five foot seven to give you a rough perspective. You don't realize until you're standing right next to them just how incredible those animals really are. Right, well, I think it's time for Brent to say good morning while we head off to help him with the tracks. So let's pop over onto the back of his vehicle.
Good morning and welcome to the Sunrise Safari. We're on Leopard Tracks. It looks like Tingana from last night. My name is Brent Yesmith. I have Brian Jubail on camera and we're fresh on the hunt for Tingana. Unfortunately, I think he is going to pass through our Travis area and I'm going to show you why I think that. So the tracks are going straight down Twin Dams Road and this is the track in particular I wanted to show you. Well, now I've lost it. There it is. Can you see here, Brian? Yep. So here is his track. There's a hippo track that is on top of his track, which means his track was early in the evening, and the hippo, probably later or early this morning, has walked across the top. So I know you guys saw him towards the end of the sunset safari last night. So I think he left the pan and he, he marched, frog marched by the looks of things. He's been going straight with great purpose to the south. We're probably about 300 meters from our southern, the southern end of our traverse zone. And I'm hoping with all hopes that he's caught something before we got there. Different morning, we've been having some spectacular sunrises. This morning, the fluffy clouds are making it a little bit later, but you can see that incredible red glow popping through the bush there. And hopefully once we get through to a bit more open, we'll see that magnificent light coming through. And Brian and I were discussing, a lot of the clouds this morning look like cotton candy. So fluffy. So for those of you new, you'll notice my head hanging off the side of the vehicle quite often. And, and that's just checking up on those tracks to make sure I haven't missed where they have gone off. Guys, look at this. It's insane. I don't know where it came from. I didn't know it was here. But it's a good start to the morning. I need to call Brent. Sorry, bear with me. Brent, there's wild dogs on the western side of quarantine. How's that for a start to the morning? start the morning. Hello, you lot. Where on earth did you come from? Well, apparently they've just been waiting here the entire time. We've barely needed to move 500 meters from camp. And Africa is always providing us with the most incredible sights. I wonder what they've killed. Munching away, I'm fairly certain it's an impala. This is why, Andrew, this is why there were no animals on quarantine earlier. Yes. I started off the morning by saying it's so quiet. Where is everything? And the answer is here. And this is why. <laughs> Wild dog luck. Looks like the Sands pack. There's definitely more adults than the Investic pack around here. Oh, bless you. One of them just sneezed. There's a sneaky one. Look here. Just underneath that tree. Munching away. How cool is this? Starting off the morning surrounded by one of Africa's most endangered, in fact, Africa's most endangered predator. And whatever they've munched on is definitely hasn't been enough to satiate this pack's appetite. This is one of the most incredible sightings to have. Let's go forward a little bit, see if we can walk, work out what they've killed. the most ridiculous luck. Oh, no, they finished. Hello, you. Hello, puppy. Oh, but you got so big. Little female pup here. Hello. Good morning. Those giant Mickey Mouse ears already on alert, waiting for the next decision to be made as to where they're going to go. They've got another one coming forward. This is 
incredible. You can see how close they are to the vehicle. And the intelligence in those eyes. The most altruistic of all of the social predators. Here we go, we've got squeaking happening over that piece of kill. Hello, you. Little male pup now. And here we go. <laughs> it's my, it's my piece of kill. Get in the position quickly. Oh, where's that pup gone? Right behind me. Yeah. Yeah, okay, awesome. One of those things you've got to be careful of with wild dogs, they like to position themselves right next to your vehicle. And obviously, I don't want to have a negative impact on them. I think we should get Brent here because this pack is mobile. Some of them are on quarantine clearings already. And you know what Brent is like when wild dogs are involved. You can just imagine the mad race that he's currently doing to get to us. <laughs> Brian, better hold on. dense vegetation in here. Oh, ooh. Defensive over what looks like. Must have been a, I think it's a steenbok. All that's left is the ears. But definitely not enough for a pack that is 15 members strong. I'm so excited, you have no idea. This is such a thrill. And you can see why they have the name, not just African Wild Dog, and in fact, whoa, unusual amount of defensive, not, not unusual, but interesting amount of defensiveness over that kill. Quite often. Jamie, I'm coming up for the one's track line about the quarantine. Confirm to take the Sorry, guys. Next to the <laughs> what you got there? That's affirmative. Um, there's some of the adults on the clearing itself. Just take that two track. Awesome. It actually looks like a scrub hair, guys, which definitely isn't a suitable meal for a big pack like this. I was saying before Brent started arriving that quite often, even with a small amount of food, if a wild dog, and there's one more there that's still munching on something, but I'm going to reposition because I'm going to come out onto the clearing. But quite often, if a wild dog shows the right amount of submissiveness, they will be allowed to take the food from another individual, particularly with pups. I can't move at the moment. There's a wild dog behind me. Brent, I can hear already on his way. The accelerator is flat to the floor. way back out of here. What an awesome start to the morning. I'm so happy. How's that, Andrew? <laughs> Andrew's chapped. Andrew's chapped. How's this? Wild dogs all over the show, just, just because. Oh, which way are we going to go, wild dogs? Why are we going back that way? <laughs> The front runner with the kill, accompanied by an entourage of. Brent racing in, excited by the wild dogs. Now, what I'd love to do is get a proper count of how many wild dogs are here. <laughs> and I think. From that perspective, Brent might have a better view. Let's pop over to Brent and find out what he's seen from his perspective. Look at this. This wild dog is literally half a centimeter from me. My favorite animals and so exciting. Brian, where are they? Are they moving or? So they, they've stopped just behind the vehicle. I'm just going to turn around. So it looks like they've killed something. 
Uh, I think Jamie thought it looked like a Stenbock. One run right next to us with that, those ears in its mouth, and I think Jamie is spot on. It does look like a Stenbock. I'm not sure which pack this is yet. Very difficult to see. They've got some, well, I don't know if we can call them puppies anymore, but sub-adults. There we go, they're fighting over the remnants. There we go, you can see the ears in its mouth. But they're heading back towards quarantine, so let's jump back on with Jamie. Three adults on the move. They're going in the wrong direction, though. The entire Impala herd, half of Juma's population, it appears, is off to the east or the west of us. They're racing east. I need to really accelerate to keep up with them. That speed and athleticism. Here comes one of them. With it still with a piece of kill. Three, four, five, six adults. Now, I've said that it was the Sands pack. I might have got that wrong. I'm not entirely sure. There they go. One, two, that's a, there's actually seven of them coming through here. It's so tricky to tell because if it is the Sands pack, then they might have left the pups off somewhere else. I'm letting Brent go around ahead of them. And you can see their hunting method at work. Just a loose trot, seeking out any kind of prey species that happens to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Rents around in front. Let's race to catch up. And while we do, let's get Briggs' perspective. The Investec pack. So we think this is the Investec pack. I'm trying to count, but they're all over the place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So definitely think Investec pack. We're surrounded by dogs. Jamie is going to go loop around again. Look at that one on the on the on the stump. A tree climbing dog. It's still carrying the stem box ears. Not often you see a wild dog. Ah, there we go. We can actually see it's not a stenbok. It's actually a scrub hare. And then we can see it's definitely a scrub hare. And aren't those markings incredible? What a fantastic morning. We've barely been out and we're with the most endangered canid in Southern Africa. There's only about four and a half thousand wild dogs left in Africa. Oh, there's big games going on here, chasing each other, full of the joy of life this morning. And that, oh, look, 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 coming in. Look at them go. And you can hear that really high pitched squeaking. This is amazing. Morning, Andrew. Uh, my dash quarantine. Two stations here. Look at that. Right up to the vehicle. Isn't that amazing? Look at that right next to us. They're literally so close, we can't even get the camera on them. 
the rest of the pack are coming. It looks like there's going to be... The adults are actually just watching this from a distance. They're right next to Jamie over there. And I thought for a second they were going to charge in to join the game. Is that a, dis a disapproving mom and dad look? Oh, here they come. Look, 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 look. The game's continuing. And the one who's still got the scrub here, not letting go of that little tidbit. Oh, look at that jumping. I hope you guys are getting some fantastic screenshots. And I challenge you guys to share your screenshots. Oh, straight over the bush. <laughs> And that click, click is my camera, so I challenge. So after drive today, I'll put up my best photograph from this wild, si wild dog sighting, and you guys do the same. We can do that on the Safari Live page or on Twitter with the hashtag Safari Live. <laughs> Big games going on. Good. Okay. What's your position? So they're about to run off in front of Jamie. Well, that looks like the game's still going on the. The rest of the pack, guys. We got. There's an elephant there. They're teasing an elephant. There's a big Ellie ball, and the wild dogs are all playing with it. And they're literally outside, they're outside our front door. Here's our front door. And look at that. I'm just gonna get in the right place. That nice Eddie Bull, I think that might even be the same one that you were with with Jamie earlier. And some of the dogs are teasing him. And strangely enough, this is the, the exact spot where the wild dogs chased an Inyala through VM's window and onto my lap. So look at this. Here's the big Eddie Bull. And the dogs are actually. Look, 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 he's going to chase the dog. So there's one dog just beyond him. The other dogs are just to the left of us. There we go. There we go, he's, he's spotted the dog. And he is in must. But he looks like he's too calm, too cool, too collected. Seen it all before, this big early ball. Jamie, um, you might want to head towards Galago. I'm Pan. There we go. That little head shake was for the dog, not for us. What's he up to? Oh, he sort of marched off after the dog. And the, the dog barking you hear is not the wild dogs, just in case anyone wonders. It is uh, the general manager of Juma's domestic dogs, a German short-haired pointer. And uh, what's the other one? Sure. Labrador. And uh, they've obviously seen the real wild dogs. Hello, puppies! Look at them, right below. Yeah. From what I can see, the rest of the pack, we're heading towards Gallagher Waterhole. Look at that, right in front of our virtual reality rig. But Jamie's got the one who's finishing the scrub air. Let's go have a look. And while the pack torments that elephant bull, who is actually thinking about coming back to chase them, this little individual has been lucky enough to finish off what's left of the kill. And Brent and I are just planning how we're going to approach this. And I think once this one gets up, I'm going to race around to Galago Pan whilst Brent stays with 
the rest of the pack, it seems as though most of them are heading towards... Maybe not, actually. That elephant bull is doing quite a good job of keeping him. There's that male from the Investic pack. It's definitely him. And there's the alpha female as well. So it's definitely Investic pack. I'm almost certain of that. That male with the really, really notched ears is wandering around. An extraordinary profile. Complete change of direction. I can smell the elephant as well from here. It's that bull that we started the morning off with. He was perfectly peaceful and content. And suddenly decided, or suddenly tormented by wild dogs. Here we go. I think we made the right call in just staying here for the moment. Wild dogs are always a tricky one. They like to dash all over the place and change direction constantly. I've also sent James off in the direction of the alarm calls around Juma Dam. Here comes our elephant bull. <laughs> can smell him approaching. Isn't it fascinating the way that elephants really dislike wild dogs, despite the fact that they have absolutely no threat or consequence to them? It must st stem from some kind of evolutionary instinct. Maybe it's the smell that they carry Maybe there was a time when elephants were smaller, James, predators were larger, that wild dogs would have been a threat to elephant ancestors. Awesome. He's coming. He's going to come. <laughs> oh, Whitney was wondering, why it is, since Brent was chatting a bit about Mike and Candace's dogs and woofing, and you can hardly blame them when an entire pack of wild dogs plus an elephant bull in must comes through. But Whitney, you were wondering, why is it wild dogs don't bark? Why don't we hear them bark? And they do, yep. Oh, here comes another one. Wild dogs everywhere. <laughs> Are you thinking about going to torment that poor elephant further? I love watching them. They're so full of mischief definitely a thought they've considered and that elephant not happy about the situation oh, I'm gonna go keep up with the rest of the pack and I think that's the last individual that's coming through and while I do that while I reposition let's go to Brent who's got the pack on the move so I'm not sure whether this is the the Sands pack or the Investec pack I'm just looking now there seem to be more adults than uh, pups or sub-adults now, they're not, we can't really call them pups anymore, they're nearly eight months old. But I think this could be the, the other pack. I'm just seeing quite a lot of adults in front of us here. And there are only three adults in the other pack and eight in this pack. Hello. They're spreading out uh, in a coursing formation. So wild dogs hunting strategy is called coursing. So they're not ambush predators. They're not sort of stalk predators. Sorry, Brian. Um, what they do is they'll do this. They'll spread out through the bush exactly like we're seeing here, and they'll course. And uh, they often use river systems or tree line edges and they just basically jog, jog, jog till they see something, and then they engage fifth gear and just take off. And there might be Impala or Winninyala down here towards the Juma waterhole. Has this dog seen something? Nope. So Whitney uh, was asking Jamie before we jumped across with us, do wild dogs bark? Oh, there they go, there they go. I'll get to it now, Whitney. They've seen an impala. They are off. Hold on, 
coming, guys! I just saw a dog going and literally touching ground. Oh, it looks like they missed and coming back towards us. Through this bush, they were going off at probably 60, 70 kilometers an hour, literally leaping across fallen branches. But Whitney now in a moment of calm. They do bark. Uh, it's a warning bark more than anything else. It's a sort of a And it's when they see a potential predator, like a, a lion or a hyena, they can bark. Or even sometimes when you approach them on foot, they'll do the same thing. Here we go. Going back to join the rest of the pack, which have changed direction. They're heading back towards the Juma waterhole. Steenbok, well spotted Brian. Look at them go. Look at how they've just all decided. They've seen the one go. Um, I'm just going to tell Jamie. Jamie, head towards Ingers. They're chasing a Steenbok to the gate, or towards the gate, it's Ingers. Hold on, everyone. You, you got any visuals, Brian? Now, this is the thing with wild dogs. They can... Still going? Yep. I, I got that. Let's go. Well spotted, Brian. And it's always wonderful to have a cameraman with a great set of eyes behind you. It makes our life following the animals much easier. Gone into quite a thick little area. You still got some? Ah, it looks like they missed again. Well. Wild dogs only miss twice, so their success rate in hunting is about eight out of ten times they will catch stuff. So, theoretically, the next one. Oh, there goes the diker with another dog behind it. Oh, it's just all going on here. I don't know where to look. I think that diker managed to evade the dogs. I think it's gone flat in one of these thickets. That's one of the diker's defense mechanisms. Rain comes down by it, Ingers. What's my best approach? Come down Warburgs, they're, they're missed. And James has come to join us in the area. So the more, if we have three vehicles around us, it makes much easier not to lose them. As you can see, they're bombshell in all different directions. And there you, go. you can see James in the background with the dogs. Now, what they're doing is because so many dogs have bombshelled in different dire directions, and it's always possible that one of them might have succeeded, they just stop and listen for that high pitched tittering that lets the dogs know what's going on. They're being very kind to us this morning, sticking to the open areas of quarantine. And there's James looking too cool for school with his hat on backwards. Here we go. Hello, Jamesy. Hello. How oh, very exciting to see the doggies. This is very exciting. They just checked. One of them ran under my arm. Oh, did it? I didn't even zoom. Look, look how happy he is. <laughs> they have munched a scrub here so far oh. and chased an impala and a stenbook, but. Oh, I not go very far. No. I think this is the Sands pack. There seem to be too many adults. Yeah. And here comes the next one. It might even run between James and myself. Come, dog. Take the photograph of you. <laughs> okay, oh, oh, there we go. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm going to try the other side. Look at all the dogs. They're coming literally through past us, around us. But we can't go. I think they might have killed something in the drainage line. Hang on. We're going to try and get around. And of course, they go through the 
worst spot for us to try cross. There we go, from James, there's a squeal coming up from either inside the drainage or from the other side of the drainage. So we're going to try and get thrown to the other side, which is also the best way to get in if they're not. Uh, Madash around uh, via Teller uh, at the moment on Twin Dams heading into the Mawati. Okay, so we're trying to get in there now. So where they went in was just over here. So um, Brian's nice and high. He's going to look into the drainage line for us. I think they might not have been come all the way through. And that's what I was looking for. An access point into the drainage system. Okay, now we're trying to see if we can find them again. Uh, We're just going to switch off and listen for a second. No visual. I'm in the drainage, James, but I'm a little bit further north. Yeah, you're exactly opposite where I was. Um, I'm, I'm listening to you. Uh, where do you want me to check? Do you think they've went further south? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to drive down the drainage. I, I didn't see any sign of them coming out on Tari Cut Line. Check down the drainage for a little bit. Confirm you don't have any more audio. Uh, nothing at this stage. Okay, so what we're doing is hoping we spot them in My here. My last visual was them crossing the drainage line, uh, just opposite where we were. Okay, Jamie said she could see from higher, but they actually crossed this little drainage system, so I'm going to get out of it again. Copy, thanks, Jamie. Um, I'll try central. Okay, you heard Brian clapping. Sorry, that was just for the virtual reality rig. Looking around, we've lost the wild dogs. They took off after something into this thick area. What an exciting way to start the morning, guys. So let's jump on with Jamie uh, and see if she has b better luck than we're having at the moment. Twin dams, Andrew clinging on for dear life. Quite possibly could go flying off the back. I've gone the long way round, Brent's gone the short way into the drainage line. James has gone wandering, walking into the drainage line to try and relocate the wild dogs. I think from where I last saw them that they were going to race down here, so I'm trying to get ahead of them. They're either going to pop out here or they're going to pop out at Vulture's Nest Road, I think. I think it's wild dogs, they could be anywhere. Keep your eye on the Juba Dam camera, just in case they decide to change direction and go back in that way. Andrew looking out using those hawk eyes of his. I'm not sure what we'd do without our cameraman because we have to concentrate on racing along the roads in situations like these. They're out for any meal they can find. 
the nice thing is, is if they do kill something, there's a good chance that we will be able to hear them. Those little submissive squeaks and yips that they make should give their location away. I've got the zoo on Gary Cutline. Gary Cutline? That's the exact opposite direction of where we were going. And as I said, you never know which way wild dogs are going to go. Brent's got them on the other side of the Juma Dam. Let's go over to Brent and have a look. So we found the dogs again. And I'm trying to look for blood on the faces. Whatever they caught might have been quite small. There's no one carrying body parts around at the moment. But they're on the move still. This is the wonderful thing about wild dogs, is they constantly... Look at that one, he's right in front of the car. Right next to us. Looks like they're heading uh, to central around the concrete dip. Now, this is a challenge to every safari guide out there, is keeping up with dogs in this particular type of country. Uh, it is beautiful mixed woodland, but mixed woodland, the elephants have pushed down a lot of trees in. Oh. Now what? Oh, greeting. Huge. Or is this a... No, I think the other pack's here again. This is a fight. This is a wild dog fight. So both packs are here again. This is absolute pandemonium. There's just dogs running in every which direction. I think the f main fight's going down on in the drainage. This audio is incredible. Sounds like they might have caught one of the members of the other pack. So guys, this is... Oh no, they've made a kill. It's just... Look at, look at them, they're, they're regurgitating. But there's too many dogs here. There's too many dogs. There's dogs everywhere. So, you guys, I'm just... There's definitely more dogs than there were just now. James, it looks like that second pack arrived again. Um, I'm trying to keep up with them. They're heading up that drainage line that runs parallel to Gauri cut line. Hey, what direction, Bridgie? I can stay here or sort of come and help you in the car. No, they're uh, very, very mobile. Uh, take get in the vehicle and head towards Buffers or cut line. OK, copy. Friends, I'm just coming across the dam wall now. I'll go into Gauri cut line. So we're just trying to listen. How amazing was that? That audio was incredible. There's one dog coming. I can hear this almost painful wail. So what's happening here is that there's been a kill made and, and the other pack arrived because, I mean, that one dog just regurgitated up. 
everything. I can hear the others there, but I can't get a car in there. So wild dogs will often regurgitate kills um, to the rest of the pack. And here is where the one just bloop, regurgitated. The meat had already wolfed down. Okay, I can hear them up here. Jamie, get onto central. I copy, I think that's the other pack. Um, I've still got dogs here um, now heading back towards central. Just listen again. We're just going to try to get around there. Jamie's in a better position. She's going to get there before me. I need to navigate out of the drainage system. So let's jump on with Jamie. Check this, another regurgitation. Chaos and pandemonium. I'm just trying to see if we've got any visual of the dogs here. We're on Central Road. James has got some of the pack members wandering through the drainage line. Brent had dogs wandering through here. I don't see any of them. Brent, did you still have visual or have they crossed central already? Yeah, Jamie, if, you, if you turn off, you should get the audio. They're just off central after that. Yep. <laughs> by the sounds of it. That one's racing back towards where Brent is. They're coming to you. Let's try and do a quick U-turn. Can you hear Franklin shouting? Yeah. Just listen. It's a tricky one, trying to decide which way to go. Okay, I confirm you've still got dogs and turned down as Just well. listening to the game drive comms at the same no, time. I'm trying to relocate. Confirm which pack you have with you. I'm just the one to choose. I can't see which pack at the moment. Brent's turning around back way. I don't think we both need to go in the same direction. So I'm going to go carry on towards Vulture's Nest. Let's see if they're further up ahead. Andrew's heard something. Oh, my goodness. Negative, the one ran back towards you guys. morning when the two packs collided there was just dogs everywhere they scattered off in different directions I'm going to just check around this direction around Vulture's Nest I'm going to tell Brent I'm going to do that Brent I'm thinking about checking down Vulture's Nest Copy I'm going to head back to where they have to that much apparently had them regurgitating part of a kill and then left it because of the interaction possibly with the other pack. Uh, 
Pennsylvania. Sorry guys, just break. listening to radio updates. I'm listening to the game drive comms at the same time. Craig's just reported that the wild dogs have touched a leopard from somewhere in the drainage line. And it's heading towards Gowrie Main, which is our southern boundary. And it sounds as though it might be Karula. Of course, with this drainage line, there's, this is where she's been moving through over the last few days. It's that wet, musky dog I'm smell. Again, um, on going there's, there's one there. There's one there. Okay, I've got some of the dogs in there. I knew I smelled them. Copy that. Um. Racing through. I wonder which individual this is. Where are the rest of them? Looking distinctly all over the place. Searching for the rest of the pack. where I really wish we could go into the mind of the animal. Whoopsie, we're going that way now for this exact reason. And while we keep up with this individual and figure out where it's going, let's go over to Brent who has got them feeding. So they came back to the regurgitation. They've just eaten the one regurgitation. There's another one just over there. I don't know if they've seen that one yet. So the, the pack split, Jamie's with some of them, I'm with the other. Look, I think, I'm not sure which way they're gonna go. Uh, we'll try stick with them. This is a particularly difficult area, unfortunately. Brian, have you got your seatbelt on? I've got my seatbelt on. Okay, good. I think you're gonna need it. Uh, oh boy. I think they're heading back towards where Jamie is. Um, they like to give us a good test. So, well, I think Jamie's going to have a better visual for now. We're going to try to keep up with these dogs through here. And I think we're stuck. So let's go back to Jamie while we try to negotiate a passage. <laughs> Cows and pandemonium. Only wild dogs can incite a feeling like this. We're racing now across to Nyala Road South. That was the last direction that those wild dogs were going. Sorry guys, back with us. There's a whole bunch of hyenas that have run in. They've heard this commotion of the dogs and the hyenas are behind us. They're smelling. There's a dog and a hyena behind us. Oh no, it's all hyenas. So these hyenas have come from the den. I can see six hyenas around us at the moment. And I've just lost sight of the, the last dog, which was just in front of us. So they've heard this commotion, and they can obviously smell the dogs, so they're, they're scuttling about, trying to figure out where the killers or where the dogs are. Look at that. The dogs are coming back. The dogs are coming back in front of us. And they could, if they spot these hyenas, wild dogs have a really effective defensive strategy. The dog is just through this bush here. There we go. They've seen the hyenas. Um, I can't move right now. They are going to attack the hyena. There we go. Unfortunately, we're just in the worst position ever. But dogs have a really effective strategy. Oh, the hyenas are taking off. Now that's actually begging. The hyenas decided that discretion is the better, better part of valor.
That's begging. Very, very loud and vocal begging. Okay, they're gonna, I, I, I would love to stop, but we gotta keep going. I'm gonna get, try and get up. The hyenas ran off as soon as they saw a group of dogs. There's one hyena jogging off there trying to avoid the wild dogs. So they can see that there's no carcass here. So they're not prepared to risk the bum biting they would get um, if, without the reward of any meat. Here we go. So Jamie's got the other dogs there on the move, so let's jump on with Jamie and we'll be back if anything happens here. Dogs are testing my ability to do U-turns. Here we go, we heard them contact calling. This is absolute chaos this morning. Hyenas on the scene, wild dogs begging here. And we're going back towards Vulture's Nest, having just made it to Nyala Road South. Oh, okay, on the move again. Isn't the stamina of these animals absolutely phenomenal? That we are driving in the way that we are. And we can't keep up with them. And it's been constant. And while I reposition and catch up with these dogs, let's pop over to Brent's dogs. Okay, so we're with these dogs. I wonder if they've stopped here and are waiting for the rest of the pack that's with Jamie to come back. Uh, they seem to be mostly adults here. So I think... Jamie, what's your position? In the middle of the block. Oh no, here, here we go again. Um, I think they might join up with Jamie's dogs. I'm gonna try stick with these guys, but I think I'm gonna try stick with them via the road as we, we got stuck quite. It's so risky to take your eye off a dog because they disappear so quickly. So I'm just, they've stopped for a second. I'm just trying to see where they're going. They're moving, not yet. I think it's almost safe to say we should just, are they going back the way they came from? So isn't it incredible, those hyenas, the den's probably 600 meters from here. They heard that incredible audio we had earlier and they just descended in to see if there was a kill. But they're not willing to risk the fight with no meat reward. Okay, they're coming down. This seems to be the hot spot, this little bottom of the drainage here. They're in and out of this area, this is where the Regurgitation happened when it looked like the two packs met. Where you got off to now? So we've got three, four, five dogs here. Painted wolf. Licon pictus. There we go. Look at this. Oh. They're just the best animals in the world. By far my most favorite creature of all creatures that inhabit the earth. Oh dear, they're going up there again. Okay, let's try. Brian, seatbelt? Yep. Don't know if we're going to be able to follow them through here. I will try my best. But we are going into a myriad. Oh, looks like they might be coming back. The mobile now. Um, I can't get through this. 
There we go. They're coming back again. So I can hear on the radio that James and Jamie are with the other dogs just over there. Oh, they're going to come right past us again. Hello, puppies. This is amazing. Oh, they're making us go loop de loop back and forward and back and forward, but it's definitely worthwhile. Twitter is wondering if they are such successful hunters, why are they so endangered? Well, Ricky, it's due to loss of habitat and persecution from humans historically. Uh, because they're such successful hunters, and before we understood what understood the, the biology and, 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 and that of wild dogs, it, they were considered to be very, very cruel in the way they kill, because they basically dismember from word go and they scoff it up. A, whole, a pack this size will eat a whole impala in under six minutes. And... Sorry, guys, just to be on the radio. Yeah, Bernie, I'm on Gary cut line at the moment, uh, close to the junction of Central. Uh, the dogs are running up and down in this area. Come here, Bernie, make your way. So, I will explain in detail why they're so endangered a little bit later, but let's just try to figure out what they're going to do next. Maybe they're going to give us, give, give us a second to, to do that. And so basically they, they've been shot out of a lot of their range. And when Kruger National Park was first formed, the rangers and wardens used to shoot all predators on site to protect the impala and zebra. And it's amazing how far conservation's come that now we huge focus on protecting these animals. So they're looking for the rest of the pack. I'm really hoping they do one of my favorite things in the world, which is that contact woo call. And we're just looking. So I know the rest of them were further to the south of us here, where those dogs seem to be looking. And Jamie and James are around there with them. And we've got four dogs. We had five. There could still be five. I mean, they're so mobile and they pop up everywhere. The other reason wild dogs are so endangered is because they're such successful hunters, they need such vast home ranges. And when I say vast, I mean, if we look at this, the two packs we get in the Sabi Sands utilize over 200,000 acres. Because if they had to stay in a very small area, they would wipe out the prey species. Here we go, we got five again. And, oh boy. On the move again. So everyone, <laughs> Everyone thinks we might have lost the VR rig. Don't worry, we haven't lost the VR rig. Um, we chose to take it off uh, due to following the dogs. Having that on the front was a, in a very precarious position. Also, we've been filming with the VR so much that the batteries um, 
on the GoPro with, with Dan. So we decided batteries were down, we couldn't film with it anymore. Better to take it off than to break it. So while we try to keep up with these dogs through the block, let's go see what Jamie's up to. And the hyenas have benefited from the scraps of the wild dog kill. They're busy crunching on a steel bucket. I'm going to reposition again. They've just moved out of here. Benny, Benny. Bear with me one moment. There's about four hyenas. Oh, never mind. Here we go. Benny, what's There's about your four hyenas coming through. Here's the one with the steel uh, bucket. Munching away on the scraps of the kill. And it's interesting because obviously the wild dogs left. Usually, we've seen them carry the pieces of the kill around. But I think with all of the chaos, they abandoned what was left of that kill. I lost my wild dog somewhere coming in this direction. And I think they might be on their way towards... They could well be on their way towards where Brent is. Here we go. Hyenas everywhere, wild dogs everywhere. What an awesome morning. Not a cat morning, but a dog and hyena themed morning. Checking out all of the scraps around there. James is racing off to go and see if he can help Brent stay with him. It's the, there's a couple of the sub-adults. I'm pretty sure there's Bella is around, as well as one, at least one of the twins, the February twins from last year. And I think one of the hyenas with a scar across her back I'm just busy concentrating as well on what's being said on the Game Drive channel. Here we go. Here, this looks like it could be June. Difficult to tell in the bush. Of course, the hyenas are capitalizing on the presence of the wild dogs, but they have to do so carefully. What with number of wild dogs that are running around and who knows the wild dogs could still enter the scene last seen coming in this direction which is why i was here in the first place before i spotted the hyenas hello you lot mischiefs Kessel. i'm sure that brent's discussed at length the possibilities that's definitely the female with a big scar across her back you can see it clearly. I'm enjoying the last little bit. Oh no, sorry, that's not the female with the scar across the back. It's definitely too small. <laughs> Eating the scraps, and that in entire head will probably be consumed by the hyena. June having a good sniff around the kill site. And the hyenas starting to wander off, right back in the direction of where those wild dogs were last seen with Brent. Jamie, I'm going to go and check Twin Dams. Copy that, thanks James. I was hoping they were going to come out here, but no sign. Sorry guys, just ducking down, chatting to James as the hyena munches on its steerbook head. Oh. Brent, Brent still got the dogs. Let's pop over to him. So we're still with five adults here. And I'm not sure where the rest of the pack is. Oh, there's one. Is that a sub-adult or is that just a female? I think it's just a female. No, it's a female. You have a bit of scent marking, urinating. All members of the pack will scent mark. And it's a very difficult thing because they've got such large home ranges as we're speaking about that often they overlap. And as we saw this morning and yesterday morning, but it's very unusual to have. Oh boy, here they go. Why are you going that way, guys? Um, it's very unusual for them to cross with other packs and it's twice in, 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 in two days is even more unusual. And hold on, we're gonna try, I'm not gonna try follow them through there. That's a really bad, thick area. I'm gonna try loop ahead of them.
I'll see them, Brian. All right, we're going to go back to Jamie while we try and catch up with these dogs again. There they go, going towards where Brent had the rest of the pack, and they're obviously searching for them. Having a good stop to listen. Is this the same pack? Is it a different pack? I really honestly don't know at this point. Really? Stop to listen. They're going they're towards... Look at that off. excitement. One, two, three, four, five, six adults going straight towards where Brent was with that hill. I'm going to try and get through off-road. Hang on to your seats, folks, because there's some narrow patches here. Going straight towards where Brent was with that hill earlier. And the hyenas are just here. Can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? While I do, let's go to Brent. So here we go. They're milling about at the moment, but they have been charging, and their general direction at the moment is towards the hyena den. And they keep looking back. I know Jamie's uh, with the rest of the pack. No, James, the other adults have just popped out around um, where Brent was earlier on, in the drainage line. Oh, there we go. So there we go from Jamie. They're actually exactly where we were. And it looks like they're turning back, and the ones behind us are also going back. Okay, let's go across to Jamie while we try to follow these guys back the way they just came from. You know, just check the others after This is thoroughly exhausting and absolutely exhilarating at the same time. The five adults have just emerged. Oh no, actually that's a, that looks like a pup to me. They're quite young. And they've just emerged exactly where Brent was sitting with the rest of the pack earlier. They're going to race across and try and relocate. I think we're dealing with the members of the same pack trying to catch up with each other and trying to relocate. And of course, in the chaos of everything, they might have been separated. Let's race up to the top because they're going to go searching for the rest of their pack members. dogs that he can see look like they might be heading back across to our side. Look how they're sniffing. They're definitely trying to relocate. And if we're really fortunate, we might even see them contact call. I think they're looking for each other. I'm not, I just want to make sure they're not going to come back into the drainage line before I go up. No, they're going to come up. And pandemonium. Andrew and I are covered in spider webs, thorns, sticks, leaves. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. And I think these are pups looking to relocate the adults. They look much younger to me. It's amazing how rapidly these pups have grown up. They're almost at the size of a full-grown wild dog. Sniffing around where the adults were and trying to figure out where they've gone. There's nothing like the excitement of a wild dog morning. I've got six pups, and it's definitely adults separated from their pups. Six pups sounds about right for the Sands Pack. As far as we know, that's all they have remaining. Are they going to go back down into that drainage line? Now we've termed them the Investic and the Sands Pack, and we're still not sure exactly what's going on here and which packs we've got. But Greg is wondering how you get naming rights to a wild dog pack. And Greg, the answer to that is, in the case of the Investic Pack, it's a sponsorship of the research that goes into the wild dogs. And the Sands Pack is the, the wild dogs 
within the Sabi Sands itself. I'm going to reposition now because I think they're going to start moving towards the adults. So it's actually the researchers and Endangered Wildlife Trust in particular that monitor the wild dog populations throughout South Africa and particularly within the Kruger National Park. And generally they're the ones who are gifted with naming rights. Which way are these dogs going to go? They're going back the wrong way. No pups. Don't go that way. Better come this way. That also this way. Well, we see if these pups decide to catch up with Brent. Let's find out what Brent is looking at. So we were with the adults and they popped back off to change, going north, they've changed direction. Oh, excuse me. Oh, now coming south. And I think the pups are still with Jamie. Hello, doggies. is taking no notice of them. Oh, look at that. Isn't it incredible? They pose no threat to the hippo. Come here. Look at this guy here. Oh, he's doing some very low or very high-pitched calling. Dogs do love water. And you can often find them lying in a puddle. Oh, nice buffalo dung. Nice buffalo dung roll. Oh, let's get smelly. <laughs> Look at that. There we go. We can hear that high pitch contact call. See how it's doing it against the ground. Same as the hyenas. I think they're close enough that the others might have heard that. Eat. go. They should be listening to the contact calls of the adults and they're going to race through this drainage line and go straight towards them. That's that's where they're off to. They know where the adults are now. We're going to see some incredible scenes of greeting. I'm not going to be able to cross through that drainage line so we're going to have to redirect ourselves. And while I do, let's pop over to Brent. I can't wait to see them reunited. So I, the pups were calling, contact calling, and apparently they've taken off towards the adults. So we're going to stick with the adults. It's just fingers crossed. Brent, they don't... another one I have. They got them there. Uh, central. Uh, I think Garrett's not I'm with the adults on Twin Dams calling. Okay, Gabby. It's my favorite, 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 one of my favorite, favorite sounds in the world. The wild dog woo contact call. And look, they're listening. Oh boy. The one place we didn't want them to go. <laughs> Let's hope they do meet up where we can see them. I don't know if we're going to be able to get in here. Oh, there we go. They're joining up. We're just going to try and get into the spot. Here we go. Great excitement. There's more calling home. So some of them have met up, not all of them yet. Are we going to make it, Brian? Yeah, you can go. Yeah, you can go. Oh, we're just sneaking past a very hard stump that would be 
unadvisable to have an argument with. Okay, it looks like they're heading. Oh, I got attacked by a Combretum. There we go. It looks like they might head back to the pan for another drink with the whole pack in tow. So I'm confident this is the Sands pack, I think. The Investec did a runner. And there are more adults in this pack. So a, a couple of months ago, I think in March or so, when these two packs met, the, the, Sabi, the Sands pack, which is this one, actually killed one of the adults from the Investec pack. Very unusual, but it does happen from time to time. Morning, Betty. How are you doing? Very well. Always well when there's wild dogs around. So both packs met, and that, that's the second morning in a row they've chased each other around. Yeah. So they did it yesterday morning and then this morning as well. Such an awesome view and those incredible vocalizations as the wild dogs disappear off towards the pan. What a fantastic morning. I just wanted to give you a really nice long distance visual. We've had some wonderful up close and personal moments with the wild dogs, but to get a different perspective on things and get an idea of the space that they cover. They are tiny animals, they're not large at all. Smaller than a border collie, I would say, if we had to compare them to a domestic breed. Just get an idea of the vastness and the speed the distances they can cover. Now Brent's going to have, I think, the best view. You can see him there repositioning. Let's pop over to him. So the pups are drinking now. The hippo is still ignoring. Look at that. Right next to us. Uh, Jimmy. Uh... Oh, doggies. Got, um, still on, uh, Look at this wild dog and hippo. Dogs are huge, huge lovers of water. I don't think they're going to go too deep into the water today because of the hippo. Otherwise, they might have gone for a swim cool off <coughs> and even though this is a tiny little pan you can see dogs are quite nervous around sort of bits of water that they think might hold a hippo and even instinctively even though they, they're probably quite sure that there's no crocodiles in here just the way they approach and you look at how they watch the water so intently see that little jump there just a little movement, probably a terrapin, and this one's doing it as well, but they are very scared of crocodiles. And amazing, hooded vultures. <coughs> now, our hooded vultures, the hooded vultures that is going to land in the tree, I think Jamie's gonna have the best view of it. Now, hooded vultures, yellow-billed kites, um, and tawny eagles have been known to follow wild dog packs because they're such successful hunters. They follow the pack, knowing there are going to be scraps to feed off. And also around den sites, around den sites, hooded vultures will actually almost exclusively feed off wild dog feces, getting enough uh, congealed or meat and blood from, from the, the feces to, to sustain themselves. Looks like they're about to go mobile again. That's the thing about dogs, always on the go. So you can see them, they're running back down the road towards Jamie. And it looks like they're gonna go north again, about to pop up onto the damn wall. There they go. 
Is everyone's seatbelts back on? Because off we go again. So let's jump on with Jamie. She's closer to the dogs. Wild dogs are keeping us moving across the dam wall. Just stopping to give you this awesome you. view, awesome overview. The wild dog pack on the move. They look like they're going to go back into the drainage line. Let's try and keep up once again. What an incredible morning to hear those vocalizations, to see the pack reunited once again. It's an incredibly touching experience. And here they go trotting off down twin dams. I mean, a morning like this is absolutely exhilarating. And that's a very good question coming from Jennifer. He's spoken about the vocalizations from the adults calling the pups to them. Jennifer was wondering, would that have chased the prey away? And it certainly would have put the prey species on alert in terms of reacting to that sound. They wouldn't run, necessarily run away though, because as you've seen, with the wild dog pack, as we move alongside them, as we've seen, you never know where you might be of running into a wild dog anyway. They're scattered all over the show, so one wild dog calling does not necessarily mean that there aren't others hiding in the bushes. So most likely the prey's response is going to be to freeze and to listen, and probably be more on alert. Whoopsie daisy. That wasn't the easiest route to take, but we've taken it now. Here we go. Try and get ahead of the pack. get there in time. I was going to try and reverse ahead of them. Here they come running down the road. Endless, boundless stamina. Right past the vehicle. Calling. Awesome. I love that sound. It's incredible. And watching them run down the road, you've got a question about, or a comment about their phenomenal stamina, and how long can they run for when they're moving like this? And the answer is pretty much on a cloudless day like today, pretty much endlessly. So Virginia in Kentucky, oh, sorry little one. <laughs> Let it come past, snuck up behind me. Virginia, this one's having another roll in some kind of dung. Scat. Mm. Yep, you work on that scent. Are you a good roll. As soon as that comes, I'll make space. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Brent and I working together trying to keep up with them. And he let me go ahead. Virginia, pretty much endlessly, they can cover enormous distances at this kind of speed. Oh, it's calling again. Nope, stop time. What a cool image. Wild dogs racing down the road ahead of us. Virginia, they can cover easily 20 kilometers, probably more, in a straight line. And wild dogs don't, as you've seen, exactly travel in a straight line. So that's about 10 miles. 
in one morning. These wild dogs have probably run about 10 miles, if not more, this morning alone. And they show no signs of stopping. They're panting a little bit, but nothing too serious. Pure creatures of stamina. Brent is parked on my bumper. <laughs> I think perhaps he'd like a chance to see. Let me move up. There's also another vehicle coming in, so I have to try and make space so that they can view as well. Which way are you going to go, boy? I think they're going to move down into the drainage line. Let's try and get around. Some more calling. They still contact calling. It sounds. It sounds almost mystical. <laughs> that vocalization. <laughs> and back again we go. Circles, circles within circles with these wild dogs this morning. This is where they disappeared off the last time when we very first found them. Keeping Andrew and myself on our toes. And you'll notice that... Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> Doing a fantastic job of staying on there. You'll notice that the one calling is the one that is leading the pack down to the drainage line and sweetens you were wondering uh oh uh oh let's try and find a way down here let me just duck my head so you can watch them and just in case we lose them we get a last view i don't plan on losing them but they're leading me down down a cliff quite literally and sweetens you were wondering is there a leader that chooses where they're going to go or directs them and it's quite a haphazard approach. Ah, uh, there used to be an entrance here, but the elephants have blocked it. Let's try and get around. There used to be a way that we could get down into the drainage line here, but it looks as though the elephants have done some roadworks for us and blocked our road down. This is where we had a road down into the drainage line when the Yukuhumas had a buffalo kill down here that was stolen from the Birmingham boys. And although the alphas lead the pack and they are the ones that breed and generally the ones that contact call between pack members, it's pretty much a mutual decision as to where the pack goes. over. Um, there used to be a route down here, but the elephants blocked it. <laughs> okay, no problem. Thank you, Bernie. Bye. Sorry, guys. Just chatting to one of the landowners. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to race Hainer. You cheeky things. You clever cheeky things. Following behind, just like the vultures have been doing. They, both, both types of, both species of scavenger know how effective a predator a wild dog is and they know that there will be scraps left behind that they can utilize. So at a safe distance, hyenas following on. And it goes back to our question about whether or not it would scare away any of the general game, that contact calling. And not necessarily, but it will attract scavengers like this sub-adult hyena combination of curiosity and appetite urging the hyena on after the wild dogs station's last visual of those were Dutch roads crossing the Washington Nest. Oh, the two 
hyenas. Copy that, thanks. I've just stopped for some messy here. <laughs> Those are the same hyena that we saw earlier. Not content with the one snack that they had, they're after more. Right. Brent is on standby on Vulture's Nest trying to find them. I'm going to head around to Twin Dams to see if I can follow them there. It's such a pity that that crossing point is no longer a possibility. It was a perfectly positioned one. What are we talking about? Oh yes, the way in which Wild Dog, where they choose to go and how they choose to move. Oh, and Brent's got them again. Let's go over there. So we jumped up ahead and shot probably a kilometer and a half ahead and fortunately... Uh, where are they going for me? Uh, my guessing skills seem to be on form this morning. And they're heading straight across towards uh, Nyala Road South. Oh, that dog nearly didn't it touch the car as it ran past. Absolutely uh, okay, amazing. Yeah, Andrew, around the closest mud wallows would be my guess, the direction they're heading at the moment. All right. OK, we're going to try to keep up with them again. What amazing morning! Wild dogs, wild dogs everywhere! So we've had 24 wild dogs two mornings in a row. So both packs, the Sabi Sands pack and the Investec pack. And fortunately, both these encounters seem to have left both packs intact. Yeah. Um, we're not going to get through there. Brian, keep your eyes on them while we try and navigate between stumps. I almost hate letting them out of my sight. Brian has got his arm out in the direction that they are. We're just trying to get our way through here. Watch out for the thorns. Andrew, they're about to come up on Nyala Road South, uh, head a bit further north. Okay, so sneak through this last little gap and hopefully we'll be on the road for a bit. And look at that, it's amazing. Uh, we'll try to show you now, but the hooded vultures are literally just sticking with them. And it's a really, really interesting tactic that uh, hooded vultures, yellow bull kites, uh, they stick with the dogs, they follow the dogs. They're aware that the dogs are such successful hunters that, and that is actually, it looks like a battalier that's doing it as well. It's a juvenile battalier that's following the dogs. Here he is. Oh, is it a battalier? I can't see. Yep, juvenile battalier. Oh, and the dog's about to go into the drainage line again. Different drainage this time. They are keeping us on our toes this morning. Jamie, Jamie. Anyway. Jamie, head out to battalier. So I'm trying to get Jamie to do the same thing we did as they went into that drainage system. Ja uh, I went around, so I'm going to send Jamie around now. Morning, 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 everyone. Morning, how are you? Very well, thanks. I'll, Jamie's going to go around to Batalia. We'll try to stick with him through here. Oh, hold on, Brian. Seatbelt's on.
Uh, now comes a very interesting part of the morning, is how do Brent and Brian cross the large drainage system? What is the answer to that question, Brian? Uh, we went straight through. We go straight through. <laughs> Brian says go straight through. So let's listen to Brian. I think we can do it, Brian. Just remove one. Oh, maybe not. That looks a bit steeper than I thought it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, engage diff lock. Okay. Very steep. Uh, to Jamie. Keep your eyes peeled. I just need to contact Brent and find out exactly how far up the road he is. I'm basically skipping one step ahead of him <coughs> to try and get to the front. I'm keeping an eye on the skies since the birds are following the wild dogs as well. Hopefully they give away their position. Just want to chat to Brent. Brent, um, roughly how far up that here? Okay, that's somewhere around here. Doing, uh, Probably didn't need to have the game drive radio right up to my ear. I think I might be now slightly there. My brain says when the says that where the drainage where the drainage line I've also forgotten how to use my words and how to string sentences together there we go this is the game path he's talking about i think let's just switch off so i can hear brent at least yep there he is found him where have the dogs gone we must have just missed them do i see any tracks on the road somewhere just ahead here. Got him. Here we go. Andrew, I've got some of them here on Battalier. How awesome is this? Teamwork. Oh, Listening yeah. to uh, where they? Brent is crossing. They look like they're going to continue east, um, just in the block to the south of Battalier. Awesome! Trying to help Andrew as well. Pearl, Andrew's been trying to get to the sighting and they've been running rings around him. I'm not sticking on the road now. Yeah, the road. There's something there. Something smells very interesting. Sure. Will these wild dogs ever tire? Doesn't seem that way. Constant action in motion. Going back. Where are they going? Oh, they're going west again. Okay. Fine. Fair enough. Down, trying to figure out which way these wild dogs are going to decide to go. And with all of this rushing around, Christopher in Arizona would like to know, is there not a danger? Let me duck out of, oh, there's another one coming that way. Oh, you're a smelly one. You must be the individual that was rolling in the buffalo dung. Christopher, you want to know, is there not a danger of running over a wild dog? No. Although I can see what you mean, what it might look like when you're racing around as we are. There is no danger to the wild dogs, but we are exceptionally careful. And of course, they are very experienced with vehicles. Brent, they've changed direction. They're going west along Battalion. 
Just trying to get a hold of Brent, tell him to go back because I can't get through here. I'm going to have to go back onto the road and catch up with him there. I can still see them. Bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. Hold on, Andrew. Andrew's got this down. You just know when there's wild dogs around. You're in for a wild ride. again and this is typical wild dog behavior they've killed but it's not enough for the whole pack and so they're on the search before it gets too hot and they have to stop moving and go lie in the shade they're making the most of the overcast morning <laughs> all those fluffy white tails running ahead of, ahead of us in the road it's awesome I don't really want them to go right into the drainage line. If they do, I won't be following them in that direction. That was where Karula's den was situated when we first located it. Obviously, I don't want to go crashing in there and make the situation any worse if the wild dogs do decide to go down there. They haven't, though. They've gone past. So everyone can take a deep breath. Two hours spent with wild dogs this morning, essentially. How lucky are we? Poor Andrew has, at this point, completely given up on trying to get to these wild dogs. <laughs> Poor guy. They've just run rings around him. What have you got there? Something interesting. A stick. <laughs> more exciting than a stick if there's nothing to munch on. A stick will suffice. At least I think it's a stick. And now, arguing over it. Sorry, Andrew. You've positioned us right on a slope. Oh, awesome. Playing and bonding. And the one with the stick is still lying in the sand. I think it's a stick. Looks like it. Oh, abandoned. <laughs> abandoned, time to move on. Two hours these dogs have been trotting like this. And at times speeding. And sprinting. They make me feel terribly ashamed of my fitness levels. Dexter is saying that he's out of breath. So am I, actually, at this point, and all I've been doing is driving. Poor old Andrew's been doing the ducking. What you got there? You hear Brent racing around to get to the other side of Twin Dams. This is why we need two vehicles in a sighting like this. Yuck. Stop eating, stop eating pieces of food. I love wild dogs. They've, every now and again, they do something that's just so familiar to us who have dogs as pets or have had dogs as pets. But to me, what is the most awesome about these animals is their synchronicity, the way that they work together like a team. With hardly any communication and less, of course, they're begging at each other or contact calling. I'm just going to let Bernie go in front since we have had some of the best views imaginable. 
but they are in the road just ahead of us. Brent should be getting around the other side soon. And there's a chance, there is a chance, that they're going to cross south over Gowrie Main. And Brent's got them, let's go over to him. So we managed to shoot around in the Moati to jump ahead of the dogs. And it's amazing how close they get to the vehicles and what little care they have. No, guys, don't go this way. It's getting close to our boundary. Oh, they found some hippo dung. To... So the fact they still woo calling means the whole pack's not together yet. How many can you count there, Brian? One, two, three. 11 odd. 11. So if this is the Sands pack, which I think it is, there should be 13. So they're missing three. Oh, it looks like playtime again. I hope you guys are getting some fantastic screenshots of this. So there's still three dogs missing from this pack at the moment, so we could count Very them. Giant breeding herd of buffalo at the Juma Dam. There are 13 um, in this pack, and as you heard there on the radio, James just said there is a giant, not just a big, a giant breeding herd of buffalo at the Juma Dam. And uh, I think while the dogs are here and this close to the boundary, it's worth staying with them. But as soon as they leave, we will head there. But if you want to have a quick look at the at those buffalo, uh, have a look at the Juma Dam cam. But Linda on Twitter is wondering whether the wild dogs will go after a small buffalo. Linda, that would be very unusual behavior, but there is a large pack in North Botswana that has been recorded. Buffalo out of the herd on six different occasions now, going for young buffalo. But in this area, I doubt they would. We've got far too much Impala, Stenwalk, and Dyker, which is what they prefer. Much less dangerous to catch as well. They are heading straight towards the boundary at the moment. Maybe they heard one of the others. Oh, found something interesting. Smelling. Oh, maybe just ate a bug, it looked like. I was really hoping they were gonna go down flat and sleep on Juma for the day, but I think, unfortunately, they might disappear. So if they give me a chance, I'm going to try to shoot ahead of them. There's some nice open area coming up. And the thing is, what, they're going down into the Mawati again. Some of them. The others are cavorting ahead in the road. Onto this area here, there's always a the possibility of a pala or nyala, like this little open area we're about to come up on. I'm busy having a wild dog roadblock at the moment. And this is, I think they're smelling Tingana. Tingana. 
St. Mark's, this is where we were tracking him this morning. They've given me the gap. You can see if there's any potential prey species waiting on these open areas. See anything, Brian? Any impala, inyala, dica, stern, buckles? Nothing. So I'm just gonna. Impala. There you go, impala. There's impala right there, well spotted, Brian. Let's see if the dog spots it. We're in the perfect spot now. And look at the hooded vultures following the dogs, waiting for them to make another kill. Stations one, Blumiti uh, on Sassons Road. To the north of cruise cut line. I think the dogs might miss them, Pilot. So even though we see them easily, we are much higher. You must remember, they're much lower. And if that impala catches a whiff of dog, it disappears. I don't think they're going to spot this impala. I think let's stick to our original plan. As the dogs are running towards us, I want to get to a, a good spot. Well, let's go have a look. Jamie's got a view of the impala and the wild dogs. Well, we've attempted to, to race all the way around to try and catch up with the dogs from a different side. Unfortunately, I have no idea where they are or what they're up to. I might have to contact Brent on the Game Drive channel to see. There's a herd of impala that were, well, like a bachelor herd of impala that were racing towards us in this position. Brent for Jamie. trying to contact Ren, figure out exactly which direction I need to go in. Ah, there we go. I have my answer. There's Ren ahead of us. And Jig has been working hard, almost as hard as the presenters and the cameramen. have company at some point with their morning coffee, a wild dog sighting with their morning coffee doesn't sound like a bad start to the day to me. Wild dogs racing through. Where are the wild dogs? They must be somewhere here. I'm going to pop over to Brent, see if he's got them that side. So we jumped up ahead. I'm not sure where the dogs went now. Can you see them, Brian? Bernie, where did those Malach go? They drop into the Mawati. No, they're in the southeast. God, thanks. Jamie, did you copy that? Should maybe go into the Mawati? OK, so they changed direction just to confuse us. So we're going to try to get in behind them, and Jamie's going to try to get up ahead of them. We're going to do some sand driving now in this riverbed. So, Jill in New York, the Big Apple. Wondering, do cameramen have seatbelts or they just have to hold on tight? Put the cameraman on. So that There's no tracks here. Um, sorry, I'm talking. Why aren't there wild dog tracks here? I think it might have headed towards Ledwood. Jamie, maybe, head towards Ledwood.
is they managed to go straight across that riverbed. I'm hoping we're going to have them around here. I'm, Jamie should be up ahead of me somewhere, also trying to guess where they're going to pop out. We took our eyes off them for two seconds. So we're going to stand by here. Jamie's going to check further up. We're just going to listen for a bit. So while we do that, uh, let's jump back on with Jamie. Our brain sits about four, oh, 200 meters behind me. I'm checking all along the road very carefully, making sure that their tracks haven't already crossed. What an extraordinary, I think we've done fairly well to have stayed with them for two and a bit hours. They've led us on a crazy chase through the bush. Oh. And they're crossing. I think Brent might be able to get there in time. I don't think I'm going to be able to. They're crossing south across our southern boundary. I'm going to try. I'm going to try for one last glimpse. Although you never know with wild dogs. They may decide that they want to come north again just for the fun of things. Whoopsie, found a stump. Well done, Jigger. Well done, Andrew. And while we race back, let's go to Brent and see if he gets a visual. It seems like the dog snuck behind us. But fortunately, there was a vehicle standing by. We'll try to catch up with them with one last view before they disappear. There they are. They could, as we've seen many times this morning, change their direction again. Ryan, Ryan. Standing by. Yeah, they're on Gary Main at Ledwood Junction. Thanks, brother. It's all good. Enjoy. I'm looking at them twice yesterday. Rain, rain. Sorry, guys, just on the radio for a second. Standing by. Are they crossing south um, over Gary Main, just to the east of the Mawati? So there we go, guys. Crossing. over our south, the edge of our southern traverse. Okay. And what an amazing morning. How long have we been with these dogs this morning, Brian? Hours. Thank you, and really, really interesting behavior, seeing both packs together. That audio was absolutely incredible. And how, when those two packs joined, uh, some of the, the adults immediately regurgitated and normally they'd regurgitate to feed the, the youngsters. This time they regurgitated, I think, to be a, a little bit free in the belly so they could carry on with chasing or fighting or whatever they were doing. It was very difficult to see what was going on. And there we go. Thanks for finding them, Jamie. Yeah, I know. I can breathe again. <laughs> that was intense. Two and a bit hours. Racing so after wild dogs. Awesome. Unbelievable. OK. What's your plan? I have no idea. I think I'm going to go I'm find a tree to have a nap under. Yeah, yeah I was thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> Just give my shoulders a good stretch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. The cameraman a good stretch. Yeah. All right. The cameraman must work. <laughs> 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 Just sit there. All lazily on top. No, I'm joking. Our cameraman get a serious workout, especially with dogs. I think uh, Brian might have a few extra bruises, grazes, Definitely. a thorn or two in strange places. I know I've got a few in my in my arm and somehow in the back of my neck. Not quite sure how that happened. I've definitely been whipped across the ear. Yep. There we go. Jamie got whipped across the ear. So we're gonna jump on with Jamie. Are you okay. gonna head towards that, I was gonna go that giant? Way. Um, Herd of buffalo, according to James. Oh, yes. Okay, I'll head towards the giant, giant. herd of buffalo. It's not just a herd of buffalo, it's a giant herd of giant buffalo. Giant herd of buffalo. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure what oh. we're going to go look for. Maybe. Awesome. Enjoy. Cheers. All right, so my friend heads off in his direction. I'm going to the, the giant herd of buffalo. That's 
James then admitted he might have got a little bit excited about and that perhaps numbered about 250 odd, I think was his guess. Sure, there we go. That word coming back again to us, that sure. we go. Apparently it's even less than 250. <laughs> James is giant herd of buffalo. He's never going to hear the end of that. And what an intense morning for all of us involved. Sprinting and racing. It's amazing. You know, you, as soon as you see a wild dog, or you even smell a wild dog, your heart rate goes up and you start racing off in search of where they're going to go and what they're going to do. Oh. Shame, and the poor people having their coffee stop had to pack up early and disappear. Just like that, like they were never there. Shame, a couple of hundred meters, and they really would have had the wild dogs join them for their coffee break. I could do with a coffee break. What do you think, Andrew? <laughs> a cup of coffee. We should just start taking flasks out on drive. No, so, back up towards... The Juma Pan, apparently the buffalo have now left, most of them have left the water and are on their way into the bushes. Hello, I know you. I know you lot. How many have we got? We've still got two. Yes, we've still got two. They're very, unfortunately, very hidden. Wild dogs! <laughs> Sorry, plans changed. I can hear them. Yeah, all those war dogs better watch out. Sorry, we were looking at we were looking at the war dog with the two babies. That's a thin female war dog, but I hear the wild dogs are coming back towards us here. Where are you, wild dogs? I hear you. Somewhere in the drainage line. I heard you heard that too, right, Andrew? I'm not now. I'm not now going insane. Did you see them or you just heard them? I just heard them making that whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, they might really have crossed. Our wild dog sighting might really be over, despite the fact that I don't want to accept it. I think we are done. Let's go check in the drainage line just in case just in case they decide to come back. I'm so sorry to have torn you away from those warthogs. It was just I could hear serious vocalization happening just in here somewhere with the gauri. And you never know when you're gonna see the wild dogs again. It's worth taking every chance. And I think our birds of prey are going to be the giveaways for that position. Alarm. I think it was a false alarm, I'm not entirely sure. As you saw this morning, direction, picking a direction is not the strong point of a wild dog pack. They like to be all over the place. Just going to check over the top of this rise as well. Have a look-see. Sorry, Jigger, you're sounding exhausted. Nope. All right. Time to accept it. Wild dog sighting is over. Let's go back to our warthog. So, for regular viewers, they will be familiar with the warthog that lives around Twin Dams. She's got two, I would say, about two-month-old youngsters, maybe three-month-old youngsters, a boy and a girl. And they're nice and relaxed around vehicles. The mom's a little bit thin, whether or not that's from the drought itself or because she's had some kind of disease, maybe. Something that's just given her at a little bit of a disadvantage. Where are these? My brain is split between telling you about the warthog and looking for these wild dogs again. Okay. We'll keep our eyes peeled. Let's go back to our warthog, see if she's still there. They had a lucky escape because those little ones would have been a bite-sized snack for a wild dog pack like that. That being said, and we've mentioned this before, tangling with war 
dogs is something only some of the bravest animals attempt. Not even, generally not even female leopards, although they will do it, but that will be a last resort to go and hunt a warthog. They fight back fiercely and those tusks are capable of inflicting serious injuries. I know of a couple of dogs that have been killed in the bush by warthogs attacking. Hello, yes, I'm talking about you. Are you fierce? little piggies. We're back. Wild dogs were a false alarm, never fear. You'll have your moment on TV. Here we go. Do you hear wild dogs in the Mulwati to the north of us? Am I going insane? I'm just going to take my earpiece out for a second. No, I'm going insane. It's the car. Yeah. It's the car moving. Okay. One of those things. I think I better put the handbrake up. Making some very strange sounds. There we go. And there we have the two little youngsters and their wonderful mohawks. I think this is the group with the boy and the girl. Yes, it is. The little male on the right and the female on the left behind the mother. And you can see what I mean when I said that she's thin. Her pelvis and her ribs are sticking out. But she's done very well to have raised her little family. As long as I've been seeing her, she's always had two. So she's managed to keep them safe. And those little fluffy cheek hair. Mm, that sentence didn't entirely come out right. That fluffy cheek hair on the little piglets themselves is a really clever nature tactic to imitate tusks, make them look fiercer than they actually are. And I don't know about you, Andrew, but I'm intimidated. Pretty scary looking creatures. <laughs> they are so cute. Bye-bye, Mom. It's funny how you get to know individual animals. Of course, we know our leopards and our lions and even our wild dogs to an extent. But getting to the point where a warthog is comfortable enough with a vehicle to be able to identify her on a regular basis and actually view her is also as much of a privilege as being able to spend two hours with wild dogs. She's got a burrow on Leadwood Road, or I think she might have moved somewhere closer to where we are now on Twin Dams. Off she goes. Now, warthogs are particularly sensitive to weather conditions. Cold, instant cold snaps, sudden rains and floods very often kill off the youngsters. They seem to get pneumonia in particular very rapidly, so it's possible that that was what happened to her. She might have got pneumonia. It does occur. As I said, they are particularly an animal that should be, or generally predators try to avoid, given their ability to fight back in a very defensive manner with those sharp tusks. And Katrina was wondering in that, if that is the case, would they be a danger to human beings in the same way that, for example, wild boar actually famed for causing serious injuries and the odd recorded death, I believe, by wild boar. And Katrina, they are dangerous, but not to the same extent that wild boar are. They're not aggressive. They will never go out and actively charge someone. However, trapped warthogs and warthogs racing out of burrows, which is why you'll notice whenever we walk, we're always very careful to move around an entrance to a burrow rather than stand in front of it before we check to see whether there's anything in it. And that's because, of course, warthogs back into their burrow, hindquarters force first, and if anything makes them feel threatened, they rush out in an explosion of dust and motion. And they, they seem to reach possibly, I don't know, warp speeds when they eject themselves from those burrows. So that is where they can be dangerous to people. I know two people currently undergoing physiotherapy for injuries related to garden warthogs. And what I mean by that, when I say garden warthogs, is basically warthogs are one of the animals that habituate quite quickly to the presence of people. 
they get quite relaxed in gardens, and of course gardens are watered, so it's a nice place to go and forage. However, what then happens is people, not intentionally at all, but they trap them, for example, between a wall and the open space or between a fence and the exit, and the warthogs rush out, and it's those tiny little tusks at the bottom, the tushes, the sharpened pieces, tusks from the bottom jaw that are actually the dangerous ones. And as I said, I know two people going through physiotherapy to reattach tendons and to re-strengthen muscles at the back, both of them the back of their legs. At about, and it's a perfect, they come to sort of perfect knee height on an adult person, which is, of course, the last tendon that you want to have sliced. Never, they're not intentionally aggressive, they're never out to hurt anyone. I once was going to check on a pump house no, it wasn't, sorry, it wasn't a pump house. It was an old abandoned farmhouse, actually. And I walked in to investigate, and there were two warthogs in the room. And at that point, I just shut my eyes and stood still because there was nothing I could do. They were already racing past me. It happened so fast that there wasn't even time to back out. Luckily for me, they ran straight at me and then went around me. As I said, they never intentionally, intentionally go to attack people. It's only when they're cornered, it's that fight or flight response. And if flight is blocked, then fight automatically comes into play. And speaking about our warthogs and the connection to other wild boars, Steve, who is watching in Toronto, you want to know if these warthogs are what they call razorbacks. That's not a name I've ever heard them referred as. Sorry, I'm just listening to James, up, James's update. let him know in a moment. The radio is a little bit busy. Lots of conversation happening over the wild dogs that have crossed, helping the other vehicles into the site and who can drive in that property. Steve, I've never heard of warthogs being referred to as razorbacks. It's not... I, I have heard of razorbacks, though, and I could, I could be wrong, but I think it's wild boars in other areas. Andrew, do you know? Have you heard... I've heard the term razorback. I can't think, yeah, I can't think exactly where I've heard the term Razorback coming from. It could be some of the wild boars in Asia might be referred to as Razorbacks. Sorry, Steve, I'll have a look, I'll double check and I'll get back to you on that. But it's not something that's applied to either our bush pigs, which are much more unusual to see, and also nocturnal species. Warthogs are two, the two main pig species or Surrey forms that we get in this area. Now a bush pig would be exciting to see. A bush pig is much more similar in terms of temperament and size and image to a wild boar and equally as dangerous. I know people who've been chased up trees by bush pigs before. They can be quite scary creatures when they want to be. Hello, Nyalas. Hmm? I wonder how these Nyala are feeling with this place full of the smell of wild dogs. Hello, girl. It's okay, they're gone, I think, unless the other pack's still here. You can see the nervousness in them. Just a little bit unsettled, uncomfortable. Can't really decide on which direction she wants to go. <laughs> you can see. Might also be the attentions of the male that's behind her. I think she might be trying to duck him as well. Yep, she's trying to duck him. <laughs> it's not just the wild dogs. It's an overly enthusiastic Nyala suitor 
that is pursuing her and causing her strange body language. I could see she was unsettled about something. And clearly he's been harassing her all morning. She really isn't all that interested. But he's giving it a jolly good go. I noticed him, as though he was behind the bush, I noticed him phlegm and grimacing. That facial expression where they curl their top lip upwards. Good luck, girl. I wish you all the best. I hope he catches on at some point. She might just be coming into the restart of her Easter cycle and wanting to dodge him. It's, it's generally the approach of animals before they are ready to mate. They, they attract the attention of the males, but they hold off on the actual mating itself in order basically to get the best possible genetic choice. So by holding off, they have a better chance of a nice strong male coming in and taking the position of maybe a weaker, less suitable male find that with almost all of the mammal species. <coughs> Either a delayed mating or a continuous mating like lions and leopards for a few days. But just to finish up with our warthog sightings as we continue on towards the buffalo, Christopher would like to know where and when warthogs sleep. There's a very upset squirrel there. There's two upsets. There's two upset squirrels. What's up? Are you having a fight? Oh. I think it's a squirrel argument. I don't see anything. Both Tingana and Karula crossed into Little Gauri this morning, probably in response to, at least for Karula, the presence of the wild dogs. But it's not those two leopards. I don't see a snake, I don't see, yep, I think that was a squirrel argument. Shouting at each other. He was shouting at his next door neighbor. Oopsie, let's try. Readapt to driving jigger. And in the space of time in which the immobilizer switches on. Right, sorry, Christopher, back to where and when the animals sleep. They sleep in a burrow in a termite mound at night. So they are diurnal or daytime animals. I have occasionally seen them fast asleep in mud wallows. You might even, if you're watching the Juma Dam camera in between our live safaris, you might even see them sleeping in the pan itself. They like to wallow in mud and water, just like all of the animals do on these hot days in the middle of summer. So they will doze off, but they mainly sleep at night in their burrows and come out early the next morning to go out and forage. The Beulah Rays also asked a very salient question about why do I, I've referred to the warthog burrows, obviously they burrow in exactly, or they, they sleep in exactly the same place hyenas do, for example, with hyenas cubs, and yet we refer to it as a hyena den and a warthog burrow, and you were wondering if, what the difference is. There's no major difference. I generally reserve the den description for predators. It essentially means the same thing. But we don't ever refer to, for example, a warthog burrow, that sounds very silly, or a leopard burrow. A den site, because it is more general, it doesn't necessarily have to be a tunnel within a termite mound. For example, Karula's initial den site underneath the, the, sort of the overhanging roots of that Tamburti tree in the drainage line, that's a den site where they can raise babies. A burrow is a more general description of a home. So warthogs will go into their burrow regardless of whether they have babies or not. Hyenas will go into their den when they have babies. So denning is more connected to offspring raising and burrowing more towards just sleeping. So we referred to dwarf mongoose burrowing or having burrows. Thank you for that. George Ann and Carolyn have both sent me through updates on Razorbacks. And now I know where I've heard it referred to or used as a term. Razorbacks are the wild boars. It's a term for the wild boars that you get in North America and Russia, which explains why I've heard of them, because I've, I've personally never been to North America, or indeed to Russia. I know James has. But I have heard of them referred to and I've seen documentaries on them and of course called Razorbacks because of the hair across their back. 
And I can see how you might, looking at a warthog, think it could be referred to as a razorback with that mohawk of hair across it. But no, no, no razorbacks here, but we certainly have their relatives. update as to the Razorback and their references in popular culture. Ellen in, sorry, I got distracted by a bird, Ellen in Arkansas, totally distracted by a redback shrike, took you away, has said that that's the team mascot of the university football team. Oh, there we go. It's wonderful. We bring a little bit of South African culture to you guys, teach you a little bit about South Africa, and of course, in return, our wonderful viewers share more of their lives. Hello, Bifalo. Good morning. Look, it's James's giant herd. <laughs> giant herd of? Giant herd of buffalo. buffalo. Giant herd of three. <laughs> <laughs> I am, of course, just teasing, since the rest of the herd is wandering back towards the Juba Dam pan for another drink. It was just the way that James described it over the Game Drive channel. It was hilarious. A giant herd of buffalo. <laughs> boys and a female. Hello, girly. You've got a funny face. Look at your funny horns, old girl. She's actually starting to go blind as well. She looks as though she's got cataracts. Well, maybe it's just the light. Definitely an old female, though that boss around the base of her horns. It's the name given to the bony protrusions around the bottom of her buffalo's horns. is quite novelled and damaged. She's covered in bald patches. No girl, it's okay. She's a big buffalo though. A large cow, if you compare her to the bull on the left, she's almost the same size. And by the looks of things, heavily pregnant. That belly's actually pulling down. And she's got a pregnancy waddle to her as well. Hello, old girl. Definitely bulging more than your average buffalo. Hello, boy. It's all right, guys. Carry on, as you were, don't stress. Okay. That old female's definitely, to me, she's almost certainly going blind. She's definitely, she's got a stiffness to her walk as well. Although I suppose if I were carrying a 30 kilogram baby, I would also walk and waddle like that. And as our buffalo disappear off, I'm going to try and reposition to relocate the rest of the herd. And while I do, let's find out what Brent's been up to since. So, finally, heart rates have returned to some sense of normality. What an incredible sighting. I'm just popping through this area again. I'm trying to see what happened to the Invest deck, a breakaway pack, and if they might still be around. Doesn't look like it. Last tracks, from what I could see, look like they might be heading north into Huffles Hook. But worth to have a little squiz about. So this lapper is saying, I'd love to see their tracks once everything's calmed down. Well, listen, you're in luck. Close or is 
Alright, there we go. You got it there, bro. Yeah. There we go. Let's, there's the wild dog track in the sand. You can see those distinct claws. It's much more narrow than a hyena track. So much more sort of long and narrow than a hyena track. And also the tracks are much straighter. So hyenas almost have a wonky track, whereas a wild dog tracks a very straight track. We can actually still smell the dogs. The smell is still lingering in the air around here. And uh, it's sort of, I think the best way to describe it is, it smells like wet dog crossed with a really old moldy towel. Now, what do you think, Brian? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. It's like wet dog in mold. But sweet. But sweeter, because it's a wild dog. And great excitement when we smell that smell or find those tracks. Oh, there's elephant tracks on top of our tracks. From a bit earlier, so let's see where the eddies are going. Looks like a single bull. Hoping he'd be at that Juma pan, but no, no such luck. It is a sort of a feel like a, I've run a marathon this morning. Brian and I were just saying, after such a high intensity sighting. It's now sort of, ooh, everyone's just sort of trying to find their feet again. Oh, I think these could be some stragglers from Jamie's herd, or James's herd. Just five or six of them, not very relaxed. Might have been separated from the rest of the herd, not sure where they went. Oh, that's where they went. <laughs> right in front of us. I wonder if this is the same herd or a different herd. Lots of herds around in this dry climate and obviously covering vast ground. Bye-bye, buffaloes. Um, I think they might be heading... I think this could be a different herd. And it might be heading towards the Gallego pan for a drink. So have a look. Uh, while we do that, Zoomy Mike is wondering, do the diurnal prey species sleep at night uh, or and do they lie down? They do, especially the ruminants, because they can carry on feeding throughout the night, but they will lie down. They do sleep not quite like a lion or a leopard who really sleeps. Uh, they sort of doze. It pays not to be too fast asleep when there's lots of things out there that can eat you. Here we go. So we've come around quite a bit, and there's still quite a few buffalo coming through the bush here. of the herd or maybe the middle. Difficult to say. Oh, tiny baby. There we go, a couple of days old, that little one. Very unique uh, sort of a evolutionary development that buffalo had. They're one of the only animals 
that can suckle on the move. So the calf will literally sit between the, his mom's legs while she's walking, between the back legs and be able to have a drink. And unfortunately for the calves, we, you quite often see them uh, with a sort of specialized hair gel produced by mom. Yeah, these buffalo lowing, but I think they are heading towards the Gallagher water. Oh, there's a big bull. Oh, doesn't he look upset with life? He's going, and he's still quite young. I think he's going to be a really big one at some stage. Very impressive set of horns on him. <laughs> it's sort of bemused look at the moment. And he's young, probably just coming into prime. So buffaloes are predominantly grazers, but in dry times like this, they will browse. You can see she's, of course she stops now, but she was browsing off that round leaf teak. I'm going to jump ahead to the waterhole, try and get there before the buffalo, so we can be in a really great spot to see them drink. I wonder, 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 wonder what else might be at the waterhole. YouTube is asking, what is the big five? And look who looks like they've got the same idea as me. Sneaky, sneaky. Uh, well, the big five uh, are named after traditionally the five most dangerous animals to hunt on foot from the Victorian era. And it's a lion. Oh, look how excited these buffalo are running towards the water. Uh, it's, let's just get into position and I'll finish answering that question for you. Sneaky, sneaky. Hello. Sneaky, sneaky. I think the same idea. <laughs> um, so this is one of the members of the Big Five, the Cape of Buffalo, quite often incorrectly called the Water Buffalo. Water Buffalo only lives in Asia, I'm afraid. But these are Cape of Buffalo. What are they free? A little bit of strange behavior. They seem quite nervous. Like, they literally look to me like they might have been harassed by lions during the night. You can see very nervous behavior. So as I was saying, the, the big five, the five most dangerous animals to hunt on foot in the Victorian era, and uh, Cape Buffalo, the lion, the leopard, the rhino. And buffalo. Lion, leopard, rhino, buffalo, and elephant. <laughs> I couldn't. Have. Thank you, Brian. I was losing my mind for a few minutes there. Um, and elephant. Now, there's lots of different sort of sightings lists that have been created since then. There's the Magnificent Seven, which uh, in includes cheetah and wild dog. But the original historic meaning of it is the five most dangerous animals to hunt on foot. So while we've got these buffalo in front of us, I think the rest of the 
herd should pop through quite shortly. And so they're just behaving quite strangely, looking very nervous. Not hanging about. Those others just ran off behind us. And I can't even, oh, I can see one of them. She's looking back. can actually hear the rest of the herd in the distance, that Here we go. Here comes the next few appearing out of the thickets. That zip you hear is Brian removing his jersey. It's like someone turned on the heat about five minutes ago. Uh, coming back. So you have that spray, that's just me popping some sun cream on. Might relax when there's more of them around. Buffalo do feel safer in bigger numbers. Well, and hopefully, having a few herds of buffalo around might draw in the lions. Oh, there's that big boy. Big dominant bull. You can see that really well-formed boss. Now, boss is that hard section of matted hair in the middle of the horns. It literally is like iron. Used as a battering ram against other buffalo in the battle for passing on genetics. And there you can see an old bull and a young bull, or two. So you can see on the left, the older bull with that very battle-scarred, well-worn boss. And then the younger bull on the right, you can see it's still smooth. It hasn't got, oh my goodness. I think this is the one Jamie saw earlier. Tick infestation. Uh, different one. One you saw with Jamie had both horns. So this one's blind in the right eye, broken right horn. <laughs> Look at that little one trying to squeeze through, the young bull. <laughs> Look at him squeezing, squeeze, squeeze. Doesn't want to go around. <laughs> now go around. The big boys are not letting you play at this particular pond just yet. Rosie says she thought they were known as African buffalo because the Cape buffalo is a subspecies and doesn't occur in this area. Uh, nope, uh, even in Kenya they're called Cape buffalo, Rosie. And that's probably just because the first time they were seen was in the Cape of South Africa. Now, the only subspecies, oh, there's a few subspecies of buffalo, uh, forest buffalo being one. And The Latin name for these buffalo, Cineris cafra, and uh, for the forest buffalo, Cineris cafra nano, because they're small. Now, there are hybrids between forest and savanna or cape buffalo as well. 
But here we get good old stock standard Cape Buffalo. Lion's favorite snack. So while we sit quietly with these buffalo drinking at the pan, uh, we can reflect back a little bit on what an insane and amazing morning we had. And the wild dogs seeing both packs again for the second morning in a row and them running into each other again for the second morning in a row. Absolutely incredible. And I think we definitely gonna have to watch that footage to try to figure out what was going on. There were just dogs bombshelling in every direction. And that audio was absolutely incredible. And then we got to see how they join up afterwards with the contact calls, the woo calls. Ooh, ooh, ooh. One of my favorite sounds in the African bush. But uh, let's uh, jump on to Jamie for the last few minutes of drive so she can give you her thoughts on that wild dog sighting. And don't forget to join us for the sunset safari. was a Cokie Franklin. The reason the Cokie Franklin is a hero is because it came fluttering out of the bushes, which made me stop to have a look at it, which in turn led to one of the most exciting mornings we've had since, you know, yesterday morning, which was equally exciting. It's extraordinary, the experience that we had with the wild dogs. To have them vocalizing with that, to have wild dog packs meeting again for the second time in two days. If that was actually the case, I mean, it is such chaos when we have sightings like that. But as Brent said, we will have to go and review the footage and try and figure out exactly what was going on. Spread out throughout Juma, providing us with one of the most extraordinary sightings you can probably have within the bush itself. And certainly a morning that I have thoroughly enjoyed, and I hope that you have ouch fly too, fighting my cough. And probably resulted in the abuse of adjectives such as phenomenal, extraordinary, incredible, mind-boggling by all of the presenters, and James himself. Even James got so wrapped up in the excitement that he was slightly exaggerating the size of buffalo herd. Interesting how nervous those buffalo are. While you were with Brent at the Galago Pan, we were driving for a dip and we actually noticed that they were very, very on edge. I tried to stop, let them walk in front of me to go and get a drink, and they absolutely refused to approach, which is very, very interesting behavior. I'm with Brent, I agree. It was probably lions hunting at some point last night that led to that extreme jumpiness that they were exhibiting. Well, as we draw to a close of our sunrise safari, we have an exciting prospect for this afternoon. Who knows if those leopards are going to decide to wander back onto the property, or if the lions might decide to make an appearance and follow the buffalo through Juma. Who knows? You just have to tune in to find out, because we certainly don't appear to be able to predict which way the way, which way the day is going to go. A huge thank you to all of you, the viewers, for providing us with the incredible questions that you do and your wonderful comments and your insights, as well as little cultural tidbits from your corners of the globe. We really enjoy the diversity that our viewers bring to Safari Live. Thank you as well to Andrew for his fantastic camera work and managing to stay on the back. I'm not quite sure how he managed it. Both Andrew and Brian did a superb job of keeping on the back, plus filming, plus managing to cling on. Well done to Jerry in final control, as well as Kirsty for picking and choosing what must have been a difficult sighting. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and we'll catch you this afternoon. Cheers for now.